all. My name is Alex. I'm the founder of Woodpecker. I'm going to be walking you through a uh, basic training session here today. Um, but first, I just want to sort of lay out uh, how things are going to work and how we how we run these. Um, obviously, this is sort of a group uh, training session. Um, we'll be recording it and making it available on our website as well as sending it out to you guys so that you can, um, you can have a copy of it. Um, but the way that it works is that um, everyone's going to be muted by default. Uh, if and when you have any questions about anything we're walking through, th please either just put that question in the Zoom um, chat window, or there's actually a functionality in Zoom where you can raise your hand. Um, so if I see anyone who raises their hand, I'll just go ahead and unmute you and you can ask your question that way if you prefer. Um, so uh, like I said, what we're going to do is cover a sort of basic slide here that uh, just going to lay out what we're going to go through here today. And then we'll walk through some of the basic um, functionality of Woodpecker and um, how you can get started with some of your, your first templates. And uh, as, a, as a sort of follow on here, we do hold a advanced training session um, also once a week, which you're feel free to sign up for as well um, from our website. It'll be uh, similar to today, except obviously the more advanced functionality of, of Woodpecker. Okay, so um, let's dive right in. Basically what we're gonna be covering today is uh, essentially firstly installing and launching the app, how you go about doing that. Um, yeah, thank you, Helen. Um, I also have my colleague Helen on the on the phone here with us to help um, with any troubleshooting issues that might come up. Um, she just put instructions for where you uh, how you can raise your hand uh, in Zoom um, for if if you'd like to do that. Uh, so again, today we're going to be covering installing and launching the application, um, navigating the interface, sort of where things are, what different things do, using auto template to ultimately create your first template. We're using manually creating and editing fields that you create. Um, simple conditionals, right? We'll have a few examples of using simple conditional logic. And then finally, we'll walk through populating our documents uh, individually and, and multiple at a time. Um, so again, today is about the basics. Our goal here is to just give you everything that you need to get up and running with your first uh, Woodpecker template. So uh, if anyone doesn't have any questions about that, let's hop, uh, hop right in. Like I said, as you come, with, come up with questions, feel free to just put them in the, uh, in the chat window or raise your hand. And as soon as I take a break um, periodically, um, we'll just uh, we'll cover them um, as they come up. So uh, what I first want to do is actually navigate to our website, which if you haven't already signed up for your Woodpecker account, I'm just going to show you how you do that and how you ins actually install the application itself. So if you're on our website, it's woodpeckerweb.com. Basically, you're just going to click on the login sign up button here, and then this is going to prompt you to uh, log in with your Woodpecker account or sign up for one if you haven't already. I'll just log in with the one that I've got already. And when we log in, we're going to get taken to the Woodpecker dashboard, um, which is, is pretty simple. But basically, the, the two buttons we're looking at are either launching the uh, app uh, in Word for, in my case, for Mac. If you're on a PC, it will say open in Word for PC um, or opening it in Word online. Generally, you're always going to click this button, though. It's just the open in Word for Mac. As soon as you click that button, basically what's going to happen is Word's going to launch itself, and Woodpecker is going to automatically get added to your um, home ribbon uh, just like this, right, in the, uh, in the, top, um, the top here. It's, the installation is as simple as that. It, uh, it doesn't require anything, any other implementation other than that. Um, so after we've installed Woodpecker, basically what we're going to do is when we launch it, we're going to click on it, and that's going to launch a window over here on the right. Um, obviously, I've already launched mine here, and we ideally will have a document that we've um, that we've uh, that we've already opened and decided that we want to turn into a woodpecker template um, to start. Um, so, in this case, I've got a simple uh, engagement agreement. So, what we're going to walk through is converting this engagement agreement to a woodpecker template in a very you know simple sense using auto template. Then we're going to go to a um, to a, a, a will document. And we're actually gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna reuse some of the fields um, so that we don't have to do the work uh, again. And then we'll walk through populating these two documents at the same time. So whenever we start with a document we wanna turn into a Woodpecker template, um, what we're gonna do is obviously open it in Word, open Woodpecker, and we're gonna click on this Analyze Current Document for Fields button, which is basically a, uh, a, an, an instruction to Woodpecker that it should kick off Woodpecker's auto template engine. So when we click on this, what it's doing right now is it's analyzing the document for things that it thinks is likely to change, or things that it think is, thinks might change or, or might be dynamic. Um, those things could include uh, obviously anything that has been represented in brackets or highlights or anything that say a human has tried to represent as, uh, as something that uh, should be changed. It also looks for um, 
uh, for data that it thinks like is likely to change, like people's names, states, addresses, emails, organization names, currencies, things like that. And it's going to give us a list of these suggestions over here on the right that we can then accept or reject to turn into ultimately Woodpecker fields. Uh, so Martin has a question. This that is from within the Woodpecker website. So we're still um, we're now in the we're now in Woodpecker the application that is running within Word. So when we uh, install Woodpecker from our website, Microsoft Word right is is actually running here uh, on my on my desktop. Let's see. Get these windows out of here. You can see that it's actually running here as an application, right? Microsoft Word on my desktop is running uh, on my computer and is running Wor uh, Woodpecker within it, sort of as like a, an application within Word itself. So installing the app basically is, is done through our website, but as soon as it's installed, Word on automatically launches itself and installs Woodpecker into the home tab for you. So I'm actually in Microsoft Word at this point. Um, let me know if that, if that clears things up or if that doesn't make sense, Martin. Um, so essentially, though, what after we run auto template on this doc, what what auto template is trying to do for us is trying to again analyze this document for things it thinks is likely to change, and then we can basically go through these suggestions and accept or reject either of any of these suggestions that are ultimately going to get turned into fields for us. And when I say a field, basically what I mean is a uh, you'll see here in a second. A, a little box, a line item that represents a variable portion of the document, for example, date or client name, things like this. Um, so quickly, let me just move this stuff out of the way here. I'm going to go through these and decide which ones I want to keep, which means deciding which of them I would like to turn into fields. So by default, um, they are all being accepted. All of these suggestions are being accepted. So what I want to do is go through each one and determine which I want to reject, right? Which ones don't, should not be turned into woodpecker fields. So firstly, if I go to this John Doe here, there's some arrows next to the John Doe, and you can see there's a little number in between those arrows. That indicates the number of times that woodpecker found this suggestion in the document. So if I click on one of these arrows, it's going to go and highlight the occurrence of that suggestion that it found, right? So in this case, John Doe is actually the, the attorney here, right? So that's actually not going to change. It's the law, so law office of John Doe. So I actually don't want to turn this into a field. I don't want to turn this into a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and actually reject it. So to reject a suggestion, there's a little trash can over here on the right. If you hover over it, it says don't create this field. So if I click on that, you can see that the whole thing becomes uh, grayed out. And now I've rejected that suggestion. And so this will not be turned into a field for me. If that's confusing, please, please let me know. I'm happy to elaborate a little. We'll do the same thing on this email here, which again, this is going to be pretty static. It's not going to change. So I'll go ahead and reject that as well. The rest of these though, in brackets, I've purposefully uh, bracketed them uh, so that we can actually turn them into fields via auto template and so that it's really easy so that auto template can pick them up easily. Um, so I'm, I don't need to go through all of these here. So I'll skip down to the bottom. Let's click on this US here. Again, this, is, uh, this is, looks like that's something that's static, something that's not going to change. So I'm going to reject that as well. The idea behind auto template, what we're seeing right now, is that it tries to take a first pass at turning your document into a template. It's not going to catch everything that you want. Um, it might suggest things that you don't want, obviously, but the idea, again, is to use auto template to turn this document into a, to a template as quickly as possible by taking a first pass at all of the simple stuff. So again, this is, this is the simple stuff. So after we're done uh, accepting and rejecting these different field suggestions, we're going to click on create these fields. Clicking on create these fields, you'll see it's basically going to have Woodpecker go through the doc and it's going to insert each of these fields for us, or variables if you like, same thing, uh, across the document at each location that it found. So again, auto template is the easiest and quickest way to actually take a first pass at converting your document to a woodpecker template. Now, because auto template looks for, you know, it casts a very wide net, it looks for things in brackets or highlights, it looks for people's names, dates, and addresses, things like this. Um, there are things you can do with your document to feed it into auto, auto template such that it's, uh, it's, it, such that it does a better job. So for example, in this, in this case, I bracketed 
all of my things that I wanted to ter be turned into variables or fields. And I know that auto template is going to pick up all the bracketed stuff. So I'm sure that it's going to, it's not going to miss any of those things. So there are a couple things you can do to ensure that your document is sort of prepared in the best way uh, for auto template to digest it and, and grab everything that you're going to want. If it doesn't grab everything that you're going to want, that's okay. We'll see how we can add and adjust fields here in a second. Um, but before I move on, does anyone have any questions either via raising your hand or putting it in the chat um, about how, about what we just did about auto template and sort of the fields that it created for us? Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do next is after auto template runs its first time, we may want to do a little bit of cleanup on the fields. You can see that the fields that have been created, right? So again, this, this field here, right? This, this line item, this sort of object here with an input box and a name and these blue buttons here, this is what we call a field. It, al it also has uh, uh, some um, dots over here on the right, which are the, uh, the sort of options that you can, uh, edit, the options you can perform on this field. For example, edit, delete, exclude, duplicate. We'll go over those here in a second. But the idea is that now that we've got a basic list of fields, we can sort of go through them and, and clean them up a little bit if they need it. So obviously, um, like I said, they're named what Woodpecker found in the document. But sometimes, for example, uh, this one may not be named exactly what we want the field to be called. So I might want to change the name of this field to be better reflective of what I'm actually asking for here. So to do that, let's again go over to these three dots on the right. Before we do that though, there's there, I want to point out that there's these little icons here. You can see this one is ABC, ABC next to each field. That's indicating the type of field that this is. And we're going to get into field types here in a second. But when we create a field, the field can have one of uh, eight different field types. And the field types range from very simple to very complex. And they're really meant to obviously help you represent whatever kind of data this specific field is representing in the document. So in this case, these are all what we call single line text fields. It's just the ABC that indicates it's the simplest field type. Um, there's nothing special going on. But again, the, the icon here is what uh, denotes the field type that this is. So let's go back to our example here. Let's say we want to edit this Mr. Mrs. Miss uh, field here. The, these three dots over on the right basically corresponds to our options that we can perform on this field. We've got edit, obviously, which will allow us to edit the field, um, edit the field name, edit the field type, uh, things like that. We've got delete, which will allow us to delete the field from the field list here in Woodpecker. And if we were to delete the field in the field list here, it's going to get removed from the document. And basically what that means is that uh, the, the placeholder that is being set for this field in the doc um, will get, will get again, get removed, but the text will stay intact, right? So that the document's not mutated just because we deleted a field. Exclude um, allows you to actually exclude a field from being populated. So when we ultimately populate this document, when I click this populate button, anything that's excluded is going to get removed from the document, but in the, in, uh, differently than deleting it, we can always include it back again, right? So if we include a field back, now if we click populate, it will now show up once again. Finally, we've got duplicate. Duplicate is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to duplicate an individual field and all the settings that you've created for it so that you don't have to do it again. For example, if I were to click on duplicate here, you can see it gives me a, a new field here where it's the same name, it's the same type, uh, optionally, we have a default value we could specify. Optionally, some guidance notes we could specify. I'll go ahead and cancel there because I don't actually want to duplicate it. But let's again pop into this Mr. Mrs. Miss field uh, to edit it. So if I click on edit here, basically, it's going to allow me to specify a name. So let's call this uh, salutation, for example. Now, for the type, this is what we were talking about with the woodpecker field types. There are eight different uh, woodpecker field types, sorry, nine different woodpecker field types, um, and they are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just run through them really quick. A single line text field is just a single line of text. It's nothing special. It's very simple. It's what all of our existing field types are currently. Multi-line text is multiple lines of text. Again, very simple. Um, nothing special. It's just single versus multi-line. 
rich text allows you to do things with fonts, uh, styling, custom styling, lists, colors, sizes, things like that. Date actually allows us to specify a format for this date, any of the many, many formats here. Um, as, and, and once we create a date field, it will allow us to uh, select the date from a date picker instead of actually having to enter in a date manually. Number will only allow us to enter in numbers. So it's sort of more of a standardization uh, feature. And then single select, multi-select, conditional, and formula are the sort of more advanced field types here that we're not gonna get too in depth into because this is just a beginner session. But basically what you're looking at are uh, a dropdown, dropdown where you can select multiple options at the same time. For example, a list of services that you provide and you could select you know, A, B, and C, and or A and B and not all of them. And then conditional logic, uh, basically, you know, if this, then that. And finally, formula calculations, which are basically just like having Excel formulas that you can use to manipulate uh, other, field, other values that your fields have. In this case, though, for the salutation, I actually want to change this into a single select. A single select, again, is just a drop down. So in this case, instead of having it be, you know, Miss, Mr., Mrs., as, a, as something I would have to manually type out, I can actually just type in some options here. So again, this is just a dropdown that I get to specify a predefined list of options for that ultimately I can select from uh, via a dropdown and I don't have to actually type it out. So now after we've specified some of these values or these, these options here, we could add as many options as we want. You know, this could be um, state that my client is in, this could be salutation obviously, this could be anything you could imagine. We could also specify an optional default value for this, right? So if I wanted to say, okay, well, this field should always default to Mr., Miss, Mrs., for example. I could also optionally specify uh, some guidance, guidance notes here. So the guidance notes are really there to help you leave, let's say, some notes for either yourself or someone else that's going to be using this template um, on what they should be filling in here, right? So I might say, uh, select the client's salutation. Now, once we're done here, we're gonna go ahead and click save. And if you remember, all we were doing is we were editing that existing field, but we could edit any other field. We can change the name, add, add uh, guidance notes, change the type, whatever we wanted to. But at this point, right, you can see that here's my guidance notes below. And if I click on this drop down here, here's my three options. Also, you can see that this icon over on the right has changed. This now um, looks, like a, looks like a little drop-down icon to indicate that this is in fact a drop-down or a single select. So what we might do at this point, right, is we would say, okay, well, maybe all of our fields are, are done. Uh, maybe they're all, um, this, this template is, is ready and set to go. So we might want to start filling in the fields itself and actually click the populate button that that's going to fill it out for us. But before we do that, um, I'm, I'm actually just going to uh, walk through a couple of the UI or the user, user interface elements here so we can know where a few things are. Um, so quickly, obviously, we walked through this sort of basic field list, the edit options here for each field type. Let's just quickly take a look at some of these uh, top top section stuff here. This plus button here is how you would create a new field. We're going to see how that works here in a second. This uh, little save floppy disk icon uh, is a shortcut for saving this template to your document collection. So the document collection is the repository that stores all of your woodpecker templates that then is shared across your team. Plus, it allows us to actually populate multiple templates at the same time. Finally, we've got this downloads fields, the CSV. So optionally, we could download this list of fields here with all of their types and defaults and all that good stuff as a CSV in case, say, you wanted to make a master field list or you wanted to give this CSV to you know, an assistant to collect uh, a new client's information. Whatever you wanted to do with it, it's up to you. Finally, let's quick a quick look at the menu here. The menu is going to contain um, links to various pages that, uh, that, that we're not going to go through each one uh, today, but I just want folks to be aware of sort of what this is and what these mean. This is a link to your clause library, uh, which is basically just a, uh, a way for you to set up standardized clauses for your team. This is a link to your collection, your document collection that I just mentioned, where um, you can actually store these woodpecker templates in a final state. This reuse fields uh, page here, we're gonna come back to in just a second. 
this is a, uh, this templates item is just a link to some pre-built woodpecker templates that are on our website that you can use as inspiration or you can use them yourself if you like. They're freely, freely available up to you. These uh, down here, chat with us, help and learning are, are um, very much about the uh, uh, um, sort of support resources that we offer. So you can actually chat with us uh, in real time from the application itself if you had uh, a question about anything. Um, so I highly encourage folks that, you know, if you run into an issue, just go ahead and chat with us and ask us the, uh, the question that you have and we usually get back to you in a couple minutes. And so that's a really easy way to um, resolve any issues that you might be having. This is a link to our help center, which is sort of like a knowledge base um, that you can use that has uh, links to, or it has pages that have tutorials and, um, and uh, guides on pretty much every feature that Woodpecker has. And then the other one that I'll, I'll harp on is the learning center, which is sort of a, uh, like a linear flow through um, basic, intermediate, and advanced users of Woodpecker. And today, this session is really covering the basic section of the learning center, plus a little bit of the intermediate. Our advanced, our advanced training session will cover sort of the back half of the intermediate as well as the advanced section of the learning center. Then finally, you've got your subscription page, some settings, and the ability to log out. So that's just a quick overview of the interface here. What I wanna do now though is, let's say that this, this template is done. I would like to now save this template to my collection, which again, is going to allow me to share it with the rest of my team. It's also gonna allow me to populate it alongside other templates that I've created. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on this floppy here and you're gonna see that it's going to save it. Because I've previously saved this template to my collection, it's gonna ask me if I would like to overwrite the existing one or keep them separate. I'll just go ahead and overwrite uh, the duplicate template there. And so now um, this template's all ready and set to go and it's saved to our collection. So what we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna walk through doing the same thing. Actually, before I do that, I said that we were going to grab the reuse fields page. Let's say that um, when we go over to this, uh, this new um, will here, I, this is a second document that I would like to turn into a woodpecker template. And ultimately what we're gonna get to is we're gonna populate both of these templates at the same time. Obviously you can see when I'm starting off here, again, I've got no fields um, created yet. But what we can do is I know that a lot of the fields that have been used in this, um, in this other template we just created, the engagement agreement, I know that a lot of them are actually gonna be used in this, in this next template as well. So what I can do is if we go to the menu and we go to reuse fields, I can actually copy the field data for the fields that I've just created so that I can use them, reuse them in another template. So if I just click copy field data here, I'm just gonna go back and then I'll go over to this new template and I'm gonna visit that exact same reuse fields page here under menu and under this paste new field data, I'm just gonna put my cursor in this input box and I'm gonna do command V on Mac or control V on PC and I'm gonna click import field data. And so now you'll see that all of those fields that I just created in the other uh, template are now all here. So what, it's, what, what I can do at this point is basically just, um, basically just go through this document and dictate where each of these fields should live. So this is actually a, a really good um, use case for um, what we call bulk insert. And before I hop into that, just, uh, what, just a quick question here. So Martin has a command or a question, what was that command you used? So I'll show you one more time, Martin. So if we go back over to the engagement agreement here, in the menu, there's gonna be a reuse fields page. And if I, I'm gonna click on copy field data, which is gonna copy it to my clipboard. And then if I go over to the the new document here, and I visit the same page, menu, reuse fields, and I put my cursor in here. You could do a right click and paste if you want. Um, the command I used was command V on Mac. Uh, on PC, it would be a control V, which is just a shortcut for right clicking and clicking paste. I hope that helps. Um, okay, so after we've, um, Yep, just a, just a copy and paste. Yep, that's it. Um, so after we've pasted in or brought in the fields from our, uh, from our other template, um, what we're gonna wanna do obviously is uh, insert some of them into the document. So this is a really good use case for what we call bulk insert. So first of all, I'm not gonna, I know I'm not gonna want all of these fields, but that's okay because we can kind of go through these and delete the ones we don't want and create the ones we do want. Firstly though, let's just take a quick look at this. So we can see that it says client first name here, client last name. 
I know that obviously I have first and last name here. So what I can do is go to this client first name field here. One thing we didn't cover when we were going through the interface is these, these little buttons over here on the left. So these buttons are gonna allow you to one, insert uh, a field into the document at some location, uh, or if we click on this down arrow, bulk insert this field at several locations of the document. So there's two ways to actually insert a field into your document. You can see that there's a plus zero here next to each one of these. That's indicating the number of times that this field is being used in the document currently. Obviously, they're all zeros right now. So we want to insert them into the doc. So the first way, you know, let's just put, uh, let's put an example client first name in here. Whoops, that's the full name. Let's do it like this. It's an example, uh, example name. The first way you can insert a field is just by actually click uh, selecting a piece of text here. Now it gets a little tricky with word selection, um, uh, word selections. So you can see right now that I selected that whole thing, but it got the space there at the end. And so sometimes it's a little tricky. So a trick I have is if you, if you hold shift and then you click on the arrow keys, you can actually dictate where the selection is um, uh, space by space. So when I'm selecting a piece of text, if I sort of overshoot it a little bit, instead of trying to get it exactly right with my cursor, I just do the shift and do the left and right arrow to get it exactly on the text that I wanted to insert. So in this case, I just want that client first name. So I'm gonna select it with my cursor, and then I'm gonna go and click this, this uh, plus zero button on the client first name. And what we should see is we should say it insert this field, client first name, at wherever my, uh, my cursor was or my selection was. And you can see that obviously the value for client first name is John. So it inserted John directly where my uh, cursor was. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that it took on the styling of where I inserted it. So this is bold Garamond 12, whereas other down here, it's Garamond 12, but not bold. So wherever you insert a field into the document, it's going to automatically inherit the styling of wherever it's inserted. So that's, a, that's just a nice thing to know. Now, you can also see that there's, there's a couple of other locations where there's client first name. So instead of going through the whole doc and trying to get my, you know, my selection exactly right and then going over to the plus one and go to the next one, et cetera, plus I don't know how many times this is being used in the doc, I can actually go to bulk insert, right? Which is, this is, this is my favorite feature in terms of ins inserting fields because um, it's way quicker, it's automated and it's less error prone. So what I can do is instead of, again, searching for each occurrence of these and clicking on that plus one, I could click on this bulk insert option, which is basically going to allow me to insert this client first name at each occurrence of some word or phrase. In this case, I'm looking for client, uh, client first name in brackets. So what I'm going to do is type out client first name. So I'm telling Woodpecker, do a find and replace on client first name but with inserting this client first name field. So it's gonna look for every occurrence of client first name in brackets, and it's gonna insert this client first name field at each of those in the doc. And what's great about this is that this is gonna handle the selection for you. So you actually don't have to worry about that shift with arrows thing. Um, it's also gonna get every occurrence of it in the doc so you don't miss one and you don't have to do a control F to find out where each one is. So once we click on insert here, you can see that it found three of them and now it's inserting this client first name at each of those occurrences in the doc, right? So it, it found three, it inserted John, and now we've got four occurrences of our client first name. Pretty simple, right? Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for client last name. We're gonna do a bulk insert here. I'm gonna type out client last name like this. We'll do an insert. You can see that it found four of them, but that it appropriately inserts the, um, the field at each of the, uh, each of the occurrences of client last name and also inherits the styling, which is really nice. Um, again, so now that's all set. So we're just gonna kind of systematically go through this doc and do the exact same thing. So let's say here's city, I see city right there. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here where we do a bulk insert. I'm gonna do type out city like this. We'll do an insert on that one. Well, it only found one, but also something errored, right? That's okay, um, because sometimes there's a little bit of funkiness with the spacing. So let's go ahead and do this one manually because I know it only found one. I'm just gonna select that city in, in, uh, my, with my selector, and then I'm gonna click on the plus button, and you're gonna see it's gonna insert the reference to that city field. Pretty straightforward. Now let's do the same thing for state, like this. We'll insert it, it found three occurrences. 
So again, now it's going and finding each of these and inserting the state field at them. You can see that it's, it's actually not, it's um, setting the value to the state field with brackets and that's because this state has no value yet. Um, so when any field doesn't have a value specified, the value that's going to exist in the document is just the name of the field surrounded by brackets. Um, so let's, let's move on to uh, a, a simple use case of, of conditionals here, right? So for example, in this case, we've got a, um, a number of children field here, right? And we've got, you know, if the, if, for example, if the number of children is greater than one, then I would like this to say uh, children. But if it's just one child, I would like this to say child. Same thing here where if I wanted to have child one name and child two name, this should only exist if there's, if there's two children. Or maybe even if, if there's, you know, three, four, five, we could set up a conditional to set that up. But again, let's keep this a little simple for now. So to, to set that up, what I'm going to do is actually create a number of children field here. So if I click on create a field, I'm just going to call this number of children. For the type, I'm going to choose a single select, which again is just a drop down. And the reason for this is just so we have a predefined list of options here. This number of children field could easily be a number field. It could be a single line text field. It's really up to you. Um, let's do this like that. Once I click save on this newly created field, again, this is how you would create a simple field. I'm gonna click save and at the bottom, here's my number of children field. And you can see it if I click on it, I've got my drop down options. Now, if I wanna rearrange these fields, this is the last uh, sort of uh, user interface element. There's these six little dots over here on the left of the field. So if I click and drag on those dots, I can actually rearrange the field itself. So if I just put it up to the top, now we can see it. Now let's use our handy, uh, our handy bulk insert feature here. So I'm gonna click the down arrow, do bulk insert, and I'm gonna look for number of children like that. And then I'm gonna insert this. Let's see, maybe I spelled something wrong. Number, number of children, try that, number of children. Hmm. Not sure why that's not working. Well, let's go ahead and just do it manually then. Do a plus there, there's our number of children, perfect. So now, uh, let's see, we just got a question here. Is it case sensitive? Good, good question, Martin. Um, it is, it is case sensitive. So it's possible that I, it's possible that I entered in something incorrectly. Um, so yes, it is case sensitive. It will look for exactly what you've typed in and, and nothing more. Um, I need to play around with that a little bit. So uh, the next thing though is let's take on this children and, and child uh, use case here. So what we can see is there's you know, a couple of occurrences of child versus children. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a conditional field that's going to depend on the number of children selector here. So what we can do is we'll do create a field and let's call this uh, child children, for example. Now for the type, we're gonna choose a conditional. Now don't let this scare you. Um, basically a conditional field is just a very simple way and meant to be a very low barrier to entry way to actually create uh, conditional logic. Now, what I wanna show you is if we, is each of these blue boxes here, we can have as many of these blue boxes as we want. We can add more by clicking on this add a condition button here. Each of these blue boxes is a self-contained condition. So but we, each one of them has an if section and an then section. And basically what we're saying is we're setting up some logic to say if some value is equal some value, then we should, you know, this child children field should take on some value. So in this case, what we're going to say is if, and we've got a drop down of our existing um, fields we've created, if number of children, and then we have the option of equals, does not equal, greater than, less than, et cetera. We want to say if the number of children is greater than one, then this should be children. If the number of children is, let's say, equal to one, then this should be child. So we're basically saying that this child children field now depends on the number of children uh, field that we've created previously. So if we click save here, we're gonna get our new child children field down at the bottom, but let's just shuffle it up to the top. I'm gonna to select one for our number of children. You can see it says child, I'm gonna select two, now it says children. So that's a simple way to set up some conditional logic. Now, the last piece is we wanna actually insert this. So let's go back to our, our, uh, our friend, the, um, 
our friend the uh, bulk insert feature. So again, let's go ahead and do bulk insert. I'll type out children like this, click insert. You can see it found one there. And the only reason it didn't find this one here is because there's some additional brackets in here that someone's um, inserted. So if we just go ahead and highlight this and then go ahead and click on this plus here, we should get our, our children field here. Now at this point, I might want to just unhighlight these. Let's see, do that one more time. There we go. One more time. Perfect. So now if we change our number of children to one, let's say this says child. And if we click on the populate button, it's actually going to swap out these two children uh, fields here with, um, with child. Uh, it's also going to fill in um, any of the fields that we've already inserted uh, with, the, um, uh, with, the right, um, with the right values, right? So you can now see, it says I have one child now living namely and this is where we would set up, okay, I only want to have this one, um, this one line item here. Uh, with the rest of these, though, is we have the number of children um, or the child children uh, a field being set correctly. Now, um, we're running out of time a little bit, um, so I'm not going to have time to cover this use case here, um, but I promise in the, um, in the uh, advanced training session, we do cover uh, this sort of a use case. Basically, we would set up exactly the same thing where we would set up a conditional field um, that actually referenced two different different options. So one option would be, okay, if the number of children is, is two, then insert two of these. Uh, if the number of children is one, then you're only going to insert one of them, right? So that's, that's sort of the simple logic behind that. So uh, just to move along quickly, because I know we're running out of time, um, let's say that now at this point, this, this template is done for us. We might go through the rest of these and say we want to clean up a couple of them, right? So, you know, maybe client street address actually isn't needed right, because we copied a lot of these fields over from, uh, from that other template here. Um, let's just quickly do, maybe we just quickly do zip here. Let's see if zip is in here. Nope, no zip. So we'll go ahead and delete that one. And then maybe I can just get rid of a couple of these others to just clean up the template a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so now let's say that this template is ready and set to go for us. Um, again, we're gonna go and save it to our document collection like this. And because I haven't saved it before, it's not gonna prompt me to if I want to overwrite it or, or keep them separate. And now, um, because this is ready to go and that engagement letter is ready to go, we can actually look at what populating these might look like. So let's say that we wanna prepare the last one testament of John Smith uh, for John Smith. Uh, so at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and actually um, here for this one, here's one cleanup I forgot to do. Let's actually change this to a date field just because it is actually a date field. And I don't know, I'll choose some, uh, some value here. Let's just say it's April. That's, that's our, our format. So if I click on the 23rd, now here's our date. Let's say our number of children is two. Here's our first and last name. Maybe our city is Boston and our state is Massachusetts. Now, to populate just this document, uh, itself, we would actually click on this populate button, which is going to, again, fill out the whole doc uh, with all the right values that we've specified in all the right places. But uh, because we want to get a little fancier and because we've created the other engagement letter first, we actually want to select this down arrow and select a populate multiple option. So we can populate multiple templates at the same time, either as docx files or as PDFs. Um, Let's choose the docx option. Again, all this dictates is what is what format the final documents will come out in, right? So if we were ultimately going to make these into PDFs before we sent them to our client, maybe we would want to uh, do multi-populate as PDF. Otherwise, we can just do docx. So when I click on that option, basically what it's going to do is firstly populate this document with the correct values. It's going to evaluate any conditional logic, again, or any formula calculations that we might have, and insert all the values into this currently open doc. Then it's going to give us a list of all of those, um, all of those templates that we've previously created. So I obviously have a bunch of them. Um, and uh, you're going to, obviously, you can see this list of, of templates that I've created and that I've saved to the document collection. One quick thing while we're in here, you can see that a bunch of these, they, they look pretty regular, but if we scroll down to these, they, a lot of them have this little shared template icon on them. So that indicates that these templates um, are, are shared, meaning they've been uploaded and saved by another member of my team. Uh, I do not have the ability to edit, delete, or download them, but I do have the ability to use them during the multi-populate process. 
So uh, you can see here that here's that engagement agreement NAT that I actually, that we created uh, previously and that we saved to the collection. So I'm just gonna select that one. So I'm basically saying that I would like to populate this currently open doc as well as one of these others, right? Or as many of these others as I, others as I want, in this case, just the engagement agreement at the same time. So let's scroll down to populate here. And because a lot of the fields um, in, uh, in, in this um, template are the same as the fields in the other template, those are gonna overlap, right? That's the other reason that we actually did the reuse fields uh, functionality instead of running auto template on this. Um, any field that is named differently, however, or does not exist in, the, in one of them, uh, and it does exist in the other, we're going to get prompted for. So you can see that the, here is a list of fields that have been created in the other template that do not exist in this one because either we deleted it uh, in this one or we added fields in this one that don't exist in the other one. So you can see obviously here is that date. So let's just make a example here. Maybe the address is 123 Main Street. There's a zip code. Let's choose our salutation. Maybe our fee is $1,000 and uh, one, thousand dollars like so. So the idea of this sort of middle state in multi-populate is that it's going to make sure that we're not leaving anything out. Um, no matter how many templates you select to populate at the same time, you're going to see, uh, you may see this middle state just as sort of a last check to make sure that you haven't missed anything. And so this is really useful for obviously, um, obviously ensuring some ac ensuring accuracy as well as ensuring that you don't miss anything or don't leave, say, the previous client's name in a document or something. So after we fill this out, we're gonna go ahead and click populate. And at this point, Woodpecker again, is gonna take these two templates. It's going to evaluate any conditionals, uh, formula calculations, uh, dynamic dates, clauses, all that stuff. And it's going to package them all up uh, into a folder that we can either download and save to my desktop uh, and then email somewhere if I wanted to, or link to that folder. So if I click on this link, it's just gonna get copied to my clipboard. Now, if I pop over into my browser here and I just do a, uh, a paste again, so right click and paste, and then I just hit enter, you should, we should see that I can download uh, this uh, folder to my desktop. So if I just quickly look at what that looks like, go over to my desktop, I'll open the folder. And if we pop in, we can see that here's our two documents that were just populated for us. So we've got that, if we just take a quick preview, We've got that last one, Testament of John Smith. You can see that the two children uh, and uh, children there, children there, right? Here's Boston, Massachusetts. Um, there's, there's John Smith there. Obviously, we didn't get to finish the uh, child one name, child t one DOB, things like that. Um, but you can see that the values we specified did get filled in in appropriate places. And then finally, for the engagement agreement, you can see that here's our John Smith with an address. Uh, here's a date at the top. Uh, here's uh, Mr. Smith with our salutation, all that good stuff. And then maybe down at the bottom here, here's my name again. And, uh, and then the, um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the um, client, right? So the idea is now is that we've, we've populated a couple of these documents uh, at the same time without having to open each one individually. And again, the more documents you do this with at the same time, the more time you're ultimately gonna save and the more accuracy you're ultimately gonna realize.